Um, everybody knows who I am, so I don't have to introduce myself. Um, I'm from Mushaboom, not directly in Mushaboom, but apparently I live in Mushaboom. Um, we've lived there for 27, 28 years now. My kids grew up there. Um, a lot of my family live in Mushaboom. I hate to see a community divided. But for some freak way, I have friends, I have clients that come to me that we agree to disagree and we don't get into an argument over it. And that's what I cherish and that's what I hope everybody in this room can do. We can all disagree. It doesn't mean we have to hate each other. The next, my next question is, when do you guys make that final decision whether you're going to continue with trying to get it here or take it to Sherbrooke? As soon as we can. And that is, I mean, it was asked, you know, by Christmas. I was asked earlier tonight, by New Year's. And I don't want to be pinned, and we don't want to be pinned down to a specific date, but it is that soon. It is within the next few weeks that we need to make a determination as to whether we would apply for an option, and, and that can be in more than one location, but in our desire, it's for one location, uh, to apply for an option to start the process of being accepted by provincial fisheries to move forward. Okay, so even if Mushaboom community, the fishermen, and the people that live in there that aren't fishermen, because I mean, it's, it's a whole community, still disagree, what then? If we were to apply for an option and start the permit process, then as with any other business, but as with a an aquaculture license, for instance, because while we don't, we are not aquaculture, and our license, our permit cannot be transferred to an aquaculture facility, we are permitted under those regulations because they don't know where else to put us. Okay, so. And so that would start a process which would have more public consultation just like this with agencies, and each step of the way, there are different agencies that have to approve our environmental impact statements, then our site plans and our engineering, and eventually over a multi-months, could take a full year. In this happens cases, all before you guys break ground. Oh, before we can do a thing, that all has to happen, yes. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Randy Hoover. I have been arrested for much of I'm a fisherman. I don't fish very much at all. I got a couple questions here in a minute, but one thing I want to know, like I hear about the divided community, about this whale is going to save the uh, hospital and this and that. God hope it does. But I know one thing, they drove my son away, he's talking about bringing people here, they drove him out. Didn't bring him here, they drove him out. So that's what I think about this whale, hopefully it can bring the people back together. When you have a cat, just go with a house cat. It's never been outdoors in its life. When it goes outdoors, what happens? It gets lost or whatever. So these whales are going to do the same thing. They're taking them out of captivity with a rat down and putting them in the wild. Is this true? Well, so putting them in an enclosure, yes. Yeah, same thing. So they're going to get lonely. Why? They're around people the whole time. So now they're not going to be around a whole bunch of people anymore. They're going to be lonely. The cat gets lonely, they're going to watch it. So, you said that uh, they they're suffering. How did they suffer if they were never if they never were in the wild? Know what the wild's all about? Thank you. We know they're suffering one because they die at a very young age. Two, they exhibit all kinds of behaviors that only psychologically disturb animals, including humans, exhibit. And three, that they die not only early, but often. Now, if you had a community of people who were, couldn't make it to adulthood, who stopped eating, who were banging their head against the wall, and who were dying of stress-related diseases, I call that suffering. That's what we see. So this cage, you're going to put them in it's now. It's not a cage, sir. Okay, this net, you're going to put them in. 
This little area you're going to put them in. Is this going to make a big difference? They're going to rub up and down the point? It's so actually going, going to make a difference because it would be over 300 times the size of the largest tank that they have available now to live in. In addition, but it, would, no in addition it would be a natural environment with the, all the stimulation that comes from being in an ocean instead of chlorinated water. So yes, it would make a difference, sir. But there's still cat. That's right. No, no, no. As is the yeah, they, they, they are still they are still under human care. And they need human care in order to survive. And frankly, we owe them that. But in terms of, and I have to say, I've personally seen it. I took a whale to Iceland and we put him in an enclosure like this. And we saw within days the change in his behavior, his robustness, the way in which he swam throughout that facility, the fact that he would swim down to the bottom and mush around with his head and all of a sudden find critters that were there and he would follow them. So we have physically seen the enrichment that this kind of a project can give to those whales. So is it still captivity? Yes, it is still captivity. But in terms of their quality of life, it's light years difference in every way that Lori has just described, from the suffering they, they experience to the kind of life they can have in a sanctuary. Thank you.